Welcome to Cartoonist Cafe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Today we're going to get into Saber by Don McGregor and Paul Galassi, the first graphic novel in the direct market, so direct market only. But before we do, Ed, what's up? What's new? Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. I'm serializing my new comic, Red Room, uh, online uh, through those channels. $3 gets you the archive. I have over... Uh, four dozen pages live now, and clearly they're in a high enough resolution that uh, people are able to print them out and make their own like little uh, mini Red Room bootlegs. But the Patreon's for the early adopter. Um, it's for people who want the sneak peek because we're solidifying the, the publishing schedule now. Probably going to start putting them out uh, sometime early next year. I'm going to work ahead a bunch so that I can get a, a bunch of issues done before we start putting those things out, especially if they start coming out on a monthly basis, man. Because there's a new month every uh, every 30 days. But one other thing, Jimmy, there's a we're going bourgeois these days, and there's an auction going on at Sotheby's right now, man. Uh, it's the first hip hop auction they've ever done. They have a lot of items from all of my favorite rappers, and they asked me to submit uh, a bunch of artwork for that. So there are eight lots of Ed Piscor artwork from Hip Hop Family Tree and my Public Enemy toy designs that are available. Um, to, to be bid on. Those links are going to be uh, in the description below this video. But the Ed Piscor Studio Edition is like the Buy Me Now option, man. Super faithful, high resolution uh, copies of all the artwork that's going to be in that auction, plus a few hundred pages more, including some X Men pages. My latest book, October on in 1976, Blacklight Comic printed with fluorescent ink is in stores now everywhere. Wherever comics are sold, you can find this. And if you really love it and want to know more about it, I did put together a 350-page process zine that is available digitally on my website, jimrug.com, that uh, is kind of a little bit of an artist edition and a mashup of how-to uh, all together, so you can pick that up on jimrug.com. You can pick up October on 1976 wherever comics are sold. This is, uh, as I said, the first graphic novel in the direct market comes out in 1978. We're going to look at a couple of these editions, but this was published by uh, Eclipse Enterprises, what would become Eclipse Comics. This is their first publication, so a lot of firsts here. Uh, Don McGregor, we know from both Don McGregor and Paul Glacey, we know from their Marvel work at this time. Um, McGregor had done things like Black Panther with Billy Graham, pretty highly acclaimed. Paul Glacey coming off of uh, Masters of Kung Fu, um, very uh, one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. So a word from the publisher here to get this started. And at the time it was, uh, I don't know if it's Jan Mulaney and Dean Mulaney. Dean Mulaney, who I think of usually with Eclipse, but he and his brother are who started this venture. His brother, I think, was coming from the music industry. Uh, Dean Mulaney, more of the comics side of stuff and, and would continue on with Eclipse Comics in a more uh, public kind of role. But just talking about kind of the background of putting this together... And the idea that, you know, comics could be better than that monthly corporate owned formula and, and really trying to find some creators who were up for that challenge and really making the work of their life. So this is a first edition. Um, I'm going to kind of flip through this as we talk about this book and its history and significance. I think it's some of Glacey's best work ever. So that'll be on display as we're flipping through and we can just kind of talk about it. But you can see like the, uh, the insert, you know, the signed book plate that's adhered to the page. And start flipping through. So this is first printing August 1978. It is creator-owned, something you know very different at the time than most of these creators were used to. It's a set-in-the-future, post-apocalyptic kind of future. 2020, by wow. the way. And one of the uh, one of the things, you know, everything's wrong in 2020, according to this book. One of them is a uh, a plague that was developed in a human laboratory. I see politicians with their masks on. Yes. Yeah, it's very eerie whenever this kind of stuff comes out. So you have, you know, rebels against these politicians as kind of the backdrop of what Saber is. And then Melissa Siren is the second lead, it becomes um, Saber's romantic interest. But they're basically fighting against this fascist future state. And beautiful black and white art. Silent sequence as they're invading some citadel. Love like the silhouettes with the screen tone. This is really these creators going for it. You know, this is a chance for them to get out, for, to, to own something. Yeah. And one of the benefits of that, you know, you see these other editions lying around here. This is the 20th anniversary edition. This was printed by Image Comics. There was a 10th year anniversary edition that was a hardcover that Eclipse put out. 
this is the same story colored and then published as a comic book in 1982. You know, at this point, Eclipse was established in the direct market. They started doing more and more comics. And the benefit of uh, the creators getting to own their work is, guess what? We can sell this again. We can print this again. We can do whatever we want. We can take it to a different publisher, Image Comics. There's also a 30th uh, anniversary edition of this stuff that is out there. And so remarkable for all the reasons that creator own graphic novel, direct market, all of those things that they pioneer, they take advantage of over the years. And so I'm going to keep going. The stuff that we know Glacy for, um, you know, the reason I think that we fell in love with him with Masters of Kung Fu is this kind of like very cinematic, hard lighting kind of style, very dramatic. And there's a lot of fun comic book sci-fi elements in this particular story. You see one right here where one of the characters is this mutant cat human hybrid. And another is uh, Woody Allen. <laughs> yeah, Glacy, uh, pretty well known for referencing real people. And I think you're right about that one, man. In the 70s, of course, you want a nerdy, swarmy little nerdy character. Woody Allen's a pretty good reference. Another thing he's he's noted for is, you know, he says he's a student of, of what Steranko brought to the game. And uh, I love Steranko in black and white. I love Galassi in black and white even more, man. Uh, so great examples of that stuff here. In fact, some of the sex scene is almost reminiscent of that Nick Fury uh, sex yes. scene with the, you know, on the beachfront property. Here's your uh, big time bad guy. This is the Overseer. He's part machine, part, part mutated human. Uh, the main adversary of Saber throughout this story. And loosely, the story is that a bunch of um, subversives have been captured by this government, and they're held in what used to be an amusement park. And so Saber and Melissa Siren are going in to try to uh, liberate these these people. And the backdrop is kind of a Disneyland-like place. This reminds me a lot of, um, if you're a fan of Slash Maraud, an, an 80s series that Glacey does with Doug Mensch, there are shades of that. You know, these characters are very much pulpy. They are cartoon characters, um, almost something like an escape from New York or something, you know, like it is a certain vernacular that, that this draws from and that it's a part of like a subgenre of these sci-fi post-apocalyptic places, you know, an eye patch character. I mean, it, it just it just feels like a, a comic you know, a, 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 like the comics that we're used to. It feels like, you know, a Marvel or DC comic by by another name. Uh, you know, what makes it a, a novel back in these days is, you know, the word fuck might be said. Uh, we saw some boobs or whatever, but it still follows along, you know, like McGregor writes. A lot of words. Yeah. Word, <laughs> words on words, captions on captions. In this scene, he's been captured and now they're erasing his memories is what's going on through this sequence. I do, I do see ambitious compositions and stuff, but even like, even the lettering is like, you know, some John Costanza standard looking Marvel DC type type lettering. It's just, it's 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 funny how, like, with this freedom, you you now have this freedom. Now what do you do with it? And it's you... not much different, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> There's an uh, like animatronic skeleton is one of the bad guy characters. So it's very like everything is something to look at. You know, there, there's no moment of boredom visually throughout this comic. And uh, one of the things they talk about in their intro, you know, you talk about Steranko. To me, this feels very Steranko-esque. Some of that, uh, you know, the designy elements. This paper is 100 page paper. This whole story is only like 38 pages. You know, it's it's bundled like it's kind of a graphic novel you know it's it's thicker this one even has a spine but some of that is production based i think this must have done uh, reasonably well because when marvel starts putting out their quote-unquote graphic novels 64 page comics with a with a you know prestige format spine uh, yeah and they talk about it a lot dean mulaney talks about it don mcgregor talks about it because this this paves the way for those in a lot of ways totally. this is very successful and they talk about phil Suling and his reaction in that he was very hesitant at first. You know, this was a $6 book in 1978. That's not what they were selling in comic book shops, you know, in this bird, in, in this new uh, budding market. That was pretty outrageous. So, you know, he kept upping the order. So he ordered, I think, a 1000 or something to start with and then just kept going up and up and up because, one, it felt good, it looks good, and then also the demand was that's, there. That's the, that's the thing worth noting as well is, like, you you have to, like, feel sooling is the gatekeeper at this time. He he had the monopoly on the direct market for several years. He invented the fucking direct market. Look how great this page is. 
This book is kind of full of these pages, you know, where it's the giant eye and it's the overseer's one good eye and the reflection is Saber pointing the gun at him, you know? <laughs> Incredible, man. Yeah. It's, it's uh, like I said, it's some of Glacey's best work, in my opinion. You know, and I don't know that too many Glacey fans are going to argue with that. It's really, he's bringing it, you totally. know, and, and you see the screen tones, you know, so it's black and white, but it's not just black and white. You know, he's playing with all these different colors. Your afterword is Don McGregor. He talks about the challenge of this new format, uh, having these ideas that didn't fit in that 20 page monthly style and how most people laughed him off. You know, it's something new. It's something different. So the first thing he would hear from everybody is, is no, don't, can't, this isn't comics. And I feel like we still hear that. You know, oh, you totally. hear it every time somebody comes out with some new, whatever, web comics were this way, manga was this way, everything's initially rejected. And then you realize like, nope, you can do really great work that way. So this is definitely uh, historically a significant comic because of the direct market and its initial insertion into there and shaping what the direct market could be. You know, this opened a lot of doors where it was like, oh, yeah, you could self-publish or you could be a small publisher. You could do original work. You could come from Marvel and DC and have, you know, sell your own stuff. This would have been, you know, very close to the rise of Cerebus time. So people were looking for alternatives from Marvel and DC on both sides as readers and creators. This was one of the early successes that I think paved the way for a lot of people to follow suit and uh, successful enough that you can find these in a variety of affordable formats. Um, you know, as I said, there have been four editions of the graphic novel released. Saber, you know, goes on to become a monthly comic for, I think, 15 or 16 issues. Uh, Glacey doesn't draw them all. He draws the first two, which is just this graphic novel being colored and, and then released this way. Billy Graham comes on and... I think there's a third artist that finishes up the series, but looks good in color too. You know, right in line again with the Masters of Kung Fu. If you're coming to Glacey from that direction, you're not going to be disappointed here. Pretty fun too. We've talked about a number of artists who the black and white color doesn't always work, but we've seen a few examples of it. And I would put this up, you know, like that's a really great panel with the warm oranges in the foreground and blue in your background. Pretty effective. Yeah. Even the stuff that looked great in black and white still works pretty well here in color. He's tra he's trained for that, you know, yeah. and and that was one of the things that Masters of Kung, Kung Fu like you could make note of a lot of black on the page, a lot of ambitious compositions and stuff, uh, and obviously Marvel DC comics are are color comics. That's really awesome. Yeah, that's your uh, your cover. Trying to make the most of that cover. It's so great though, even like Warriors esque. Whenever you see the any kind of like cityscapes and stuff, he would have done a great Warriors adaptation. <laughs> would have been amazing. But it's kind of cool. And then the background is a Charles Vest story, and uh, this might be of interest to some of our some of our viewership. Might be of interest to you, Ed. This back up story colors Lynn Varley. So Charles Vest line art with Lynn Varley colors. Uh, 1982, 1983, pretty early on in Lynn Varley's coloring career. Yeah, it's it's fun to see her play with uh, four color. Yeah, like right, like that's, it, like that's amazing. It's fun to see her play with the limitations that your standard colorist had. Yeah, man, yeah. Charles Vest too, pretty strong uh, work early in his career. And you get a little bit of the the ancillary stuff. You know, I think the first one has Dean Mullaney talking about kind of the historical significance of this book. There's a lot to recommend there, so I would highly recommend it to fans of this kind of genre, sci-fi, post-apocalyptic, fans of Glacey, and again, it's out there in affordable editions, you know, the image version, quality-wise, it's pretty strong stuff, you know, very sharp, crisp printing, sometimes these reproductions or these later editions aren't always that great, they're shot from a printed version instead of originals, I don't know if this is the original film or not, but it's a very crisp reproduction of may help that it's black and white and you know maybe that's a little bit easier to reproduce than the color versions especially if you don't have the film and separations but this looks great so you know you're not really trading off much if you get a, uh, a later printing super cool so that's saber don mcgregor paul galacy 1978 and uh one thing that that came up over and over going through the wizard stuff is how big eclipse was in the 80s like i swear they published almost every indie book that i would track down recently feels like they all came out of eclipse comics in the 80s and this is eclipse number one super cool man k fabers like follow subscribe to the youtube channel hit the bell we'll notify you when new videos are available octobriana's in stores patreon.com slash ed for for red room comics and the hip-hop family tree auction it's going on right now you can subscribe to the cartoonist k fabe e-newsletter at the link below this video to keep up with everything we're doing 
You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, give them the marching orders, dude. Read more comics.